everybody, it's Andy from the SA Survival. Hope you can hear me. Today I want to talk about General Tires Grabber X3 and General Tires Grabber ATX. Primarily we're going to talk about the X3 tires and how they have performed. I am not sponsored by General Tire whatsoever. I did buy them at a discounted price of 60%. That's my disclaimer. Um, we did drive them to Alaska. These tires currently have around 20,000 kilometers on them and we did 12,000 kilometers within three weeks on them straight away. We did buy the 275, 65, 20s. So I went 10 higher because the original spec are 275, 55, 20s. And I did get the E-rated tires. Now the E-rated tires in General's catalog are 10 ply. So that's good enough for us to be strong and durable for what we were doing in Alaska. We do tow two trailers. You've seen in the past we drive uh, Fred 2.0 with Tracer, which is a 28 foot, 5,900 pound trailer. And we also drive with Oasis, which is a 2,400 pound, 15 foot trailer. They are load rated to 3750 pounds each tire. So this maxes anything that we could actually do with this. Loading the bed with all of the weight that we carry and the trailers together. Brand new, they measure in at 1830 seconds. Measuring them right now, I have done a tire rotation. We have switched the, these are the fronts on the back of the truck and the rears are on the front of the truck, obviously, uh, due to the weight of the trailer uh, being towed, towed on the 12,000 kilometers. Um, they had worn in 12,000 K in three weeks. It was all tarmac road. Uh, it's set for 27, I'm going to say around 27, 2800 kilometers of gravel road. Let's measure these and see what we see. I'm going to measure them in the center of the tread, which is where I do them all the time. And they measure in at 14 millimeters on the rear. The front tires measure in at 13 millimeters. Now I have a metric tire gauge, so again, I will put the equivalent imperial measurements down below. And that will tell us our comparison. We did buy them in March, April 2019. It is February 2018 and that measurement. So we're running roughly, you know, 10, 11 months. How have they performed? I was panicking on the um, Dempster Highway. We never had a problem. The surface of the tires did start to pit. These were the rear tires and since August to February we have now been driving on normal roads. When we were on the Dempster Highway the lugs definitely got pitted from the gravel and the road conditions, uh, the 2700 kilometers. So this really did get pitted quite heavily. Having driven them back on the road surfaces, they have smoothed off, as in taken away the divots or the dimples that were created from the, uh, from the gravel road. They proved phenomenal. They really did. I could not have asked for a better tire. We aired down these tires to 35 PSI from hot. So when we were traveling, they were 45 and 42 front and rear uh, when they were hot during the day. We aired down to 10 PSI less, which gave us 35 and 32 PSI with the trailer. I didn't want to run lower than that with having the trailer on the back end. Again, we did not have a problem. It actually did help the drivability with Fred 2.0 and the trailer airing down that little bit and my peace of mind. Pros, solid tire, 
10 ply air down they did an amazing job um, they cleaned all the rocks out spat them out the sides they didn't really grab onto anything siping deep siping in the tread blocks for all weather conditions rain snow sun frost and gravel roads uh, mud sand they all worked flawlessly we never had a problem once we did not get stuck once we never used our traction aids uh, or anything like that negatives the amount of tread depth that are on here basically threw all the rocks out sideways and gravel rashed the trailer and even the leading edge of the uh, rims on the back now again these are on the front so these were the rear rims and tires and I'll show you what I mean this is a leading edge and those divots were from rocks spat up from the X3 tires on the trailing edge no divots so you can see the damage created on the back from the front tires whipping up the rocks off the Dempster Highway to the rear wheels noise they make noise I will add some video with us driving on the main roads so you can compare or hear the road noise do they have a rumble yes they do have a rumble is it a good rumble I find it's a good rumble I never had a problem with the rumble of the tire whatsoever does it get annoying it only got annoying to me at the beginning because I have never driven a mud terrain tire in my life so when I first had them mounted and balanced I had them rebalanced with a road or load force balancer and that was because I thought they would been balanced incorrectly I found out that they were balanced completely they were fine no problems but these blocks each one of these blocks as it's moving into the road there's a gap and there's a fair size gap so you would have gap block gap block and it would resonate through the steering wheel or into the cab so you could hear it I was just not used to it I've never had this mud terrain before it would make sense because they are a knobby tire I like the sound and I'm gonna go back to old school the old Land Rover drone as they were driving along can you hear them from the outside that's one test I have not done and I've not listened to it myself because I'm always behind the wheel um, so from inside low speeds uh, up to 70k yes you can hear it it does not change from higher speeds so 70 plus kilometers an hour and it's kilometers an hour for us this is just a normal road conditioned drive test for the tire noise of the x3s you can hear the whirring and then as we brake and slow down to a stop you can hear them a little bit louder so i'll shut up and let you listen Even on different terrain or road surface finishes, the drone or the whirring is still there. That noise is tires, it's not differentials or wheel bearings. And as you slow right down, 
looks like you hit the rumble strip. And we're doing 50 kilometers an hour. So on average speed for main roads within cities. This is a high speed test. We're doing about 80, 85 kilometers an hour. Not sure if you'll pick it up because of the traffic on the highway. positives I never got stuck this thing or these tires dug themselves out of everything that we did again I will show you some videos of us in snow so this is a test to get Fred's boots these ones if I get my finger in the right way his new boots that have been about 20,000 K on them the general tire grabber x3s Sandra's gonna video this to see how we get out because I have to go to work today. Yes, and so we're gonna see if we get out of this snow and the road is about- 10 inches. 10 inches apparently. So I know that it's soft and fluffy, but it'll give us an idea of two wheel drive coming out. Now this is the test. Bella is the co-pilot at the moment. So hang in there. Engines are running. So I'm gonna do it in two wheel drive first. No. This is a good test though. Watch Chris's truck. Okay, now I could pull out here. I'm gonna put it at four high and we'll see what happens now. quiet around here. No one's gone to work. Except for me. Here comes Fred. Just like that. And there's Bella. Hello, Bella. So four-wheel drive high with the tires. Oh, amazing. But we're going to see what this is like driving all the way to Sanders work. Come on in. Okay, okay. from a standstill, four high, general grabber X3s, six to 10 inches of snow. Not driving fast. I'm not going to be a bully about it. I'm going to be a madman, but oh. yes. We will see what this drive entails us. It's a fresh dump of snow. It's very light. <coughs> so it'll be a bit slick underneath and quite fluffy. So let's see. 
a brake test. Okay, a little bit longer than I expected, but there's a lot of snow here. Start off. It doesn't slip at all. Slowly. No problems there. Through. Give her some gas. No wheel spin. That's good. She bites those tires and dig in. So, where the slush is like this, we'll show you turning a corner with these tires and slow it down so we get these pedestrians out of the way. Biting. Go around this corner, Let's see what the tires do. Yeah, not bad. A little bit of understeer there. I'm really impressed with these tires so far. They do well. I'm a, I'm a cautious driver. I'm not a overly rambunctious type of person when driving in the way of conditions. So, you know, you've got to drive with caution. There's no point writing your vehicle off. But so far, Fred being pretty well balanced and these tires are doing really well. Snow. Uh, and in rain, they do disperse the rain. Uh, a friend of mine asked me if they aquaplane. I have never experienced aquaplaning. I have seen the rain and the water dissipate. Uh, I've gone through deep puddles, short distance puddles, but you can see the plumes of water that come up over the truck just from dissipation of these treads. They did an amazing job. So we are gonna be little boys and little girls. I'm going to follow the arrows. And little puppy dogs. We're going to go see what happens. <laughs> Hang on, Bella. We're going through! Yeah! Here goes Andy being absolutely like a little boy in the truck. And he's going to get me wet. Come on, these guys are going through this way. Bella, here we go. Um, in the sand, when we got stuck, I four wheel low, diff lock on, I backwards and forwards, we didn't get stuck, we had a deep trench, and what we ended up doing is I did not air down, I did not use any max tracks or traction aids, um, but we came out and I didn't have a problem, and I'll show you those photographs as well. So we drove onto the beach here, and we decided that we weren't going to drive along the beach too far, so we did a U-turn, and we got stuck here. Well, I say stuck. We had to go forwards and backwards a bit and turn the steering wheel left to right, but other than that, we got out. But it's amazing to see the weight that Fred had in her, him, 
and how deep these tracks were. I mean, we were in full low second gear and yep, I was starting to think we might have to air down the tires and use the max tracks to get out, but ah, Fred came out. Pretty deep. Especially when you're about 70, 400 pounds in the truck and 2,400 pounds on the trailer. <clears throat> Just letting it calm down. So the general tires are not invincible. But again, we became invincible because we survived. Overall, would I buy these tires again? I'm not sure. The reason why I'm not sure is they did create fuel economy issues for me. I went up 10. That also put my speedometer out. So I had to buy um, a speed range adjuster, a mileometer, your speedo adjuster, so I could get the clock to read right and for the computer to gauge the fuel economy. I'm a big fuel economy guy. Yes, I'm towing trailers, but I watch what I'm doing. I'm not a speed demon. Um, we did notice with the stock tires, two seven five fifty five twenties. We did notice on the highway they would do around about nine point five to ten point two uh, liters per hundred. Put these on, I lost uh, about two liters per hundred. They average run about eleven point five, uh, and that's on the highway. In the city, I was running around twelve. Mm, less than that it's probably around 11 to 12.5 liters per hundred in the city I consistently run around 14 liters per hundred in the city with these tires um, they are a heavy tire don't forget they are heavy tires which I keep forgetting about and you lift one of these up without a rim you know you're lifting them up they are 70 pounds a tire so you are adding a lot of weight to your truck so obviously fuel economy is going to change um, is is that a deficit to me not really um, because I put these tires on they were what I wanted and I knew that they could get me on the Dempster Highway which is where I needed to go that was the primary goal here going back to would I buy them again I like the look of them these are so aggressive they're so neat you stand back they make the truck look amazing um, I like the ATXs as well. I might go to a 275-6520 on the ATX, but again, with an E-rated tire, uh, I have to do the research on that because our ATX tires on Oasis are 15 inch and they only come in a C-rated tire. Um, I would like to have got uh, a harder or a stiffer sidewall, but I didn't want to buy rims at the same time. Is that in the future cards for the Oasis? No. Looking at the aggressive tread on the tires, they are amazing. So much tread on the sidewall, as you can see. So much tread inside of the tire itself. So running these flat or low pressure down to maybe 15 PSI, no problem. There's a good look at the front-on tire tread. Even wear, there is no uneven wear on these tires. I have not adjusted the track whatsoever. Uh, these are stock um, tire and track adjustments. I just did notice right here, you can see a chip out of the tire. I'm not sure if you'll see these. These are the small divots I was talking about on the Dempster. They smoothed out, but you can see them for sure on the tire itself. Again, you can see some of the divots from the Dempster Highway on the driver's side. The tires took a bit of a pounding on the Dempster, but survived really, really well. I kind of like this. They got grabber written in the, the 
tread depths here, which is really cool. This is that deep siping that I was talking about. The tire has performed really well. What does the truck look like? The truck looks amazing. It looks good in its stance. The tires look great in their size. Any problems with them in the wheel arches? Only one. The only issue I have is on my driver's side was on this crash bar and you can see it right there. And it's only when it's in reverse. It does not do it when I'm driving. The tires are not worn on the inner edge because of hitting that crash bar. And again, it's only when I back up. And there are the plies, the 10 plies. We have seven plies on the tire itself and three plies on the side wall. And one thing that I did notice down here is the fact that it can take 80 PSI of loaded cold pressure, which uh, I didn't know before. And I think I'm gonna raise the pressures for the trailer. And again, the 3750 pounds of load rate. Just thought that I would reinflate the tires to 40 psi on the rear of Fred using the Milwaukee air inflator. So we're gonna go. We were down at cold pressure was 33 and a half psi, which looking at the bulge in the tire, I thought it was a bit low, but the onboard pressure sensor in the truck said that they were all perfectly fine. So, ah, cold pressure, time to adjust them. Put the rears to 40 and just see if it makes a difference towing them home. So over to the ATX tires now. And these tires are 30 by 9.5 15s. I believe this left tire has around about 12 plus six about 19,000 kilometers on it. The other side has about 12,000, about 12 to 13,000 kilometers, and the spare has about six to 7,000. And the reason why there's an offset is because I had a, um, a suspension failure on the right side, and I had to switch out the spare for the uh, right side. These ones measure out to 11 mil and this tire like I said has the most amount of wear. I measure the right tire and we get about 12 mil on this side. On the spare tire we have 13 mil and this one has the least amount of wear out of all three I'm not sure if you're gonna see there's a bit of the sidewall damage where it got overheated and you can see on the grabber there the rubbing and again right here the load range on these as i said before are c but the nice thing about the atx tires are they are m and s with snowflake so these are snow rated tires again atx you can see that these tires have eight ply there are six plies on the main tread and two plies on the sidewall the max load on these is 1984 pounds and our tire pressure's max cold is 50 PSI. So the ATX tire I like a lot um, and this is the discrepancy I have of would I get the X3 over the ATX. I had 82s on my previous off-road trailer and they never had a problem. I didn't have brakes on that trailer, whereas I do have brakes on the Oasis and the brakes work well with this tire combination. Tire noise, I didn't hear any. Um, it's not on the truck, I couldn't test anything with it. 
um, obviously being in the truck you don't hear anything from the trailer how do they drive straight and narrow the tread has been perfect it's flat across the board uh, never had any wear on it even after I had uh, run this tire it was only about 50 kilometers I needed to get out of the bush and back home um, it did heat up the side wall as we saw but it never did any wear on the tread itself so the reason why it's on here is because of the precaution and I had a really good tire as a spare so that went on the truck would I buy these to try out yeah I would like to try them and again in an e-rate just so I can run the sidewalls down to a lower pressure and compare them and as I said earlier would I do it not currently because I have a lot of tread left on the uh, um, X3s so uh, originally purchased tires uh, come in at 16 30 seconds which is the same as the X3 I believe that these are a little bit softer and the only reason why I reason to believe is because the tread has worn down a little bit more in 20,000 K between the three tires over the X3 uh, again they're on a trailer so the wearability is going to be way less over time for me because we don't take the trailer out all the time um, but if you're to have them on a truck they may wear out earlier than the X3s just by looking at 20,000 kilometers on the X3 over 20,000 kilometers on one of these tires which is around 11 millimeters left I do like them uh, I do like the fact that in Vancouver to go outside of the city, lim city limits we do need a winter tire this gives us that opportunity it doesn't say that I can't go out with the X3 because I'll all say M and S as well and I also carry chains uh, and also having the infamous four-wheel drive uh, with a diff lock with chains would give me a little bit more of a chance to get through some of that thicker stuff on our highways if there was a problem by law um, towing around Alaska and also uh, to Colorado with these tires on the trailer tracked perfectly never had a problem it didn't throw so much debris up um, it, it just worked well it dissipated the water going through puddles uh, with the brakes and when we've hit the brake system in snow with the truck this uh, trailer stopped on a dime so overall between the X3 and the ATX tires I think they're a very good brand I like the design I like the the knobbiness of the tires the aggressive look the sidewalls everything is positive and they do the job really really well I would just like to maybe get a 16 inch rim for the trailer and put a E or even a D rated tire on here so we could run them a bit flat in Alaska 2700 K on gravel roads we did run 10 psi lower than spec again when these were warm they were around about 43 psi so again lowered down to 33 psi hot temperatures that is i hope this is a good guide towards uh, you understanding how we like the general tire grabber atx and the grabber x3 so my overall opinion of these tires is they've worked remarkably well I have not covered enough uh, off-road terrain to justify me wanting to buy them again, I don't think. I do love the look, I do love the way they handle, and I have never got stuck. So that is huge bonuses for me. Uh, the noise doesn't bother me, I do like them. It was a concern at the beginning, I just wasn't sure if there was a problem, but because, you know, through my own diagnosis and talking to friends, the blocks are so big that when they're hitting the surface, that's what makes the noise. The ATX tires, I would consider putting on this truck um, because I've not had any problems with them on the trailer. Would I buy them? That's a tough call because I would like to try the 20 inch ATXs and just see what the differences are but these tires have got one year on them or just under one year and they have not worn out so I won't be going out of my way to purchase another set of tires whatsoever in the near future so these tires are with me for at least another year um, depending on what we decide to do if I was to buy another vehicle would I put them on them tough decision 
really is a tough decision. All terrains over mud terrains. Um, I know I don't get any tire noise from the all terrain ATXs. Hmm. I don't know. Would I condemn them and say don't buy them? No way. No way would I ever say that. These tires have been good. In fact, a friend of mine has been asking me for a long time, you know, how do I like them? How do I like them? He's been waiting for this tire review forever, but he just uh, the other week he purchased them because he wanted to try them out. And so I know, uh, given a plug out to uh, Expedition Overland, they run uh, general tires, but they're also sponsored by them. But their mixed vehicles have ATXs and X3s on there. I've got X3s and ATXs. I've got a bit of a mix review as well. Um, but I love both of them. Um, I've never been drawn to other brands. Uh, a lot of people have driven other tires that look just as exciting as these tires and they've never had a problem. Um, but I do love the way they look on this truck. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's just, there's a lot, there's a lot. Would I buy them again? Uh, yes and no. And that was only because I'd like to try the ATXs out. Um, but knowing my luck, I'll get into a situation the ATX won't uh, get rid of the mud, won't get rid of the snow. Um, but, you know, that's going to be my problem. And I want to get back into the mud terrains. Uh, oh, one other thing. These tyres, the X3s, are not snow rated. But I have had no problems in the snow whatsoever. So the tyres didn't bog down, they didn't slip on slippery conditions they never locked up I never lost control um, I've had, it's been a great experience I hope this tire review comes with some excitement for you and that you like it because I can't give you much more information 20,000 kilometers of travel we have done on them they have never been a problem the noise like I said is probably the only thing that you will notice uh, and that is going to be a noise preference for you does it bother me no it doesn't they have been a great tire and they should still be a great tire for me in the near future please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already survive to be alive